Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you very much, thank Master very much. Shinoharu, for joining the Flying Monk talk show. It's a great honor. Thank you. Um, I've seen you now twice performing, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I laughed so much both times and learned a lot as well. Great. So first time was last year? Uh, last year. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was a very small room last year. Do you remember? Yes, it was and like the, a, a classroom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we were sitting at the back. Okay. So she was a one little girl at the oh, back. and. Nice. Um, nice. Okay, nice. I'd like to start, if you could uh, explain to people, what is uh, Rakugo? You mm -hmm. are a Rakugo performer. Right, right. Uh, in England, in, in the West, we have this tradition of stand-up comics, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but you are a sit-down comedian. So yes, So what yes. exactly is uh, Rakugo? So um, it's, a, it's one of the uh, traditional entertainment um, that's been passed on in Japan for around two to three hundred years. And so it uh, began in the Edo era in Japan. And um, it's, it's a combination of acting and storytelling. So uh, it, it's not like stand-up comedy where the comedian narrates the, uh, the situation and, and performs as that person on the stage. In Rakugo, um, we, we act the roles of people, characters appearing in the stories. And uh, by doing that, we um, make the scenes alive in front of the audience so they can, they can um, experience the story as they are actually seeing it. And so that's the style of Rakugo. And, uh, and, and that's where I, I fell in love with Rakugo. So we sit down on stage um, and we sit on a cushion called Zabuton. And one person wearing kimono looks this way, acts um, one person looks this way and acts another person and uh, leave out the narration, and we just uh, tell the story. What was your first time that you saw your teacher, who you yeah. became a disciple of? Mm -hmm. First time was um, when I was 25. I had graduated from a college in the U.S., and I, I felt that I needed to know more about Japan, so in total, I spent seven years in the U.S., and my elementary school days and college days. And so I went back to Japan, started working for a trading company. And at that time, I hadn't met Rakugo. And the general image of Rakugo among the young people in Japan are, um, is just, uh, it, it's boring mm. and, and, and it's difficult. And so there's just this uh, traditional entertainment kind of um, very very firm, you know, like um, hard to understand kind of image. And I had that as well, but uh, uh, accidentally walked past a theater, a very small theater where my future master happened to be performing. And, and he was a very famous person. He appeared on TV a lot. So I knew him as a TV show host, but I didn't really um, know him as a Rakugo performer. But I went in anyway, and uh, I was shocked because it was so fun. And I, and I just, um, he started, you know, he sat on the stage, started telling a story, and then he disappeared. And I had these images in my mind, and, uh, and that was the first time I felt like that. So I, I fell in love with Rakugo, and I thought, oh, I have to check, check this out. More, more people, everyone's. And I went to many places, and... Uh, and my life changed. Before we come back to the yeah. your study, this yeah. this thing about the per, the performer disappearing, it's mm -hmm. amazing because I felt the same. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's Shinoharu talking about being in Cambridge, suddenly you're gone. Yeah, yeah. And there's these this old man and young man having this exchange. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's very. Uh, how do you explain that? What is going on there? So um, by leaving out the narrator, um, by myself ceasing to be the narrator, I guess, um, you know, we just show the actual scene. And mm. so uh, the audience can feel like uh, it's, it's unfolding. You know? Yeah, it's not like you're telling a joke. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You, you become the characters and then we interact with the characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's a very special experience. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. it's, so it's a collabor collaboration. Um, mm. The audience uh, has to do the job as well, half the job, we do half the job, you do half the job, and then it's, it's perfect. Yeah. And obviously the decision to study Rakugo was a huge thing. You were 
had a regular career. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What was the moment you just thought, this is it, and why? Why did you? So I, I felt a big shock, you know. I felt, wow, this is amazing at, at my first encounter. And then I went to many shows, and um, I saw many performers, but uh, I thought my, my master was the best by far. And uh, gradually, I think, a um, little over half a year, um, I, I started thinking, I'm going to regret it if I didn't become a Rakugo performer, a professional performer. And so um, after about half a month, uh, I mean half a year, I, I uh, uh, started preparing for um, the, the apprenticeship, you know, going into apprenticeship, quitting the company. Mm. And you studied with your teacher for eight and a half years, eight, yeah, eight, yeah. eight years mm -hmm, or more. Mm -hmm. How did that, how was it in the beginning mm -hmm. and how did it evolve and how is it now? Mm. Uh, it, was, uh, it was very rough because I had no experience, um, usually people who become professional Rakugo performers have amateur experience in school clubs, like college clubs. We have the Rakugo Ken Kyukai, which is like you know, Rakugo club, and, and they have experience there, but I had none, totally none. And I had met Rakugo 10 months before, you know, and, and, I, and I hoped in. So, uh, uh, but before I, I um, started performing Rakugo, it was all about um, caring for the master, uh, or it's, it's a Japanese style, just uh, making the master c comfortable. In Japanese, it's like, ore wo kaiteki ni shiro, was the word, um, make me comfortable, which in modern Japanese society, you're not really allowed to say in, in companies and stuff, just make me comfortable. And, uh, and so um, I had to do that, but uh, I was very bad at that because uh, I had spent some time in the U.S. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, it, the basic idea is when you, when you want something, you would ask for it, the, the U.S. style. Mm -hmm. In Japan, you would have to um, think about the others before they, they say something. And uh, it's, it's rude to make them say it. So you have to move in advance. And that, uh, yeah, was not good. So it was rough in the, in the beginning. And, uh, and but uh, after a while, I started, um, so my master started teaching me Rakugo. And it was, it was very exciting for me. Of course, uh, my Rakugo was terrible in the beginning. So my master would say, oh, no, that is not Rakugo. And he would just say, make it Rakugo. Uh, without any advice, so that's a way of teaching. You know, teaching without teaching, teaching without giving hints or advice. So uh, he would say, "That's not Rakugo," and uh, I would, you know, practice some more, many try many patterns, and then go to him and say, uh, "Could you listen to my Rakugo?" And he, he would um, maybe listen like twenty seconds, and then he'd say, "That's not Rakugo. Make it Rakugo." And uh, it's just a uh, that um, all the time. Maybe for a story, 12 minute story, it took like six months to get an okay from him. So it was long. How did yeah. you feel when each time he said that? Was it like a assault on your ego or just, no, I'm determined to, to get it better? I was pretty determined, mm. but uh, this also is the old Japanese style, but uh, the master would tell the apprentice, you have no talent. So you should quit right away. So he would say those things, you know. Um, even just just uh, random people walking on the street would perform better than you. <laughs> so he would just uh, attack my ego, you know, try to damage my ego. And uh, I guess if you're able to stand that, um, you're considered uh, maybe you can keep on living in the world of Rakugo. So, mm -hmm. so they intentionally damage your ego. But uh, I, well, I, didn't, I did not know that at that time. And I was, I was hurt, I was damaged, but uh, I was determined to um, continue this way. And I, I felt like, okay, this time I'm gonna surprise you. This time I'm gonna surprise you. 
and uh, I failed every time, but still, I, it, it was fun. Um, just, um, I would get a no, not okay, you know, I would get a no from my master, but then um, during the process of practicing, I would maybe find something like the voice or um, the, the way to act out the characters. I may, I have some findings and, and that was the exciting part. Mm. Was there a moment you said, now this is Rekuga that you're doing? No, never. no, never. When did you know that he approved? I still don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, so they don't say those things, the Japanese masters, you know. I, I, I hope before he dies, he says it once, maybe, you know, I approve of you, <laughs> something like that. But you were given the title of master in 2020, was it? Yes, yes. So obviously, was there like a, like in martial arts, we give a, a scroll or, or something mm -hmm. like this? Mm -hmm. Did that happen? Yes, I, I, got yeah. a, I got a scroll, yeah. That was obviously approval of the highest level, because that's yes. his tradition that he's passing to you. Right? Yes, so yeah. it was written, but it was not verbal. <laughs> <laughs> the, the person who speaks so much on stage. Right. Yes, but... Uh, between the master and apprentice, there are no words. It's an unspoken mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Yeah. Um, there's so many parallel, believe it or not, with martial art training and the, oh, the okay. things you talk about. Yeah, For example, yeah. the other day you were talking about going from a fixed stories, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like cutter, I guess, in martial arts, yeah. to ultimately to art, to free expression. Mm -hmm. um, it's exactly the same in martial arts, obviously, to make it your own. Yes. to come alive yeah so again was there a moment you felt maybe during performance that wow okay this is coming through me it's not a fixed thing anymore the thing is yes i had that moment and um, that was where performing in english worked because i had to do the kata in japanese and all the stories i learned from him and i, I tried to copy it completely and even the voice um, I try to copy, and it was not my voice when I think about it now, um, but I tried very hard to do it like he did. And then, maybe about um, 10 years after, or uh, 9 years after I um, entered this world, I had a chance to perform in English. And for my English Rakugo story, I did not have my master as an example. Mm -hmm. So I had to translate the story I already performed into English and, and do it my way. And in that process, um, my, my voice was, I realized, very different from my Japanese Rakugo and English Rakugo. And I, I felt, why is this? And uh, I assumed that, that the English one is myself. And so um, probably somewhere in between my professional voice um, is is there, and so uh, it was a, a good um, chance that I, I did it in English so that I could find um, the difference between myself and me pretending to be my master. Yeah, that's extremely clear. Mm. Yeah, I think it's the same for any discipline or way, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And also for everybody to find who are we. Yes. Not just yes. mimicking yes. or being conditioned by our parents or peers, but, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's very like I can see, like I'm talking to you now as a person. Yeah. There's a very clear you, mm -hmm. a very strong spirit and a very real presence. But when you take on the character, it's so clearly that character. Mm -hmm. And it seems like, a, um, like Zazen, for example, where you're giving koans. Mm -hmm. I know this is a, probably a bit of a stretch for some people, but... It's almost like a spiritual practice where you, you have this extremely disciplined cutter. You have to do to perfection, but then you have to let it go. Yeah, yeah. But in the, in the process, there's some change mm -hmm. and you find yourself. Yes. Is that a bit esoteric or would you agree with it? I, I would, yes. And it was a lucky thing that I had two channels, you know, the Japanese and, and English, mm -hmm. because I was able to realize it um, not too late. If mm. I had only done it in Japanese, I would probably perform it in a very different way from the way I do now. Mm. I would be speaking now in a very different voice. Um, I used to speak like 
Well, um, you see, uh, so my first experience in Rock Google was um, when I was uh, working for a trading company like that. Right. And my my right. master speaks like that. Yeah. And, but my voice is not like that. So, yes, uh, yes. yeah. Well, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, and, okay, the other side of this is at some point did it become, did your performing side become fun rather than a job? And mm -hmm. how do you how do you feel each time you go on stage now? Is it is it fun? Yes, um, and the reason is because well we we perform. I mean we sometimes perform the same stories, of course, but uh, the same story that I performed yesterday and today would be completely different um, because there are different people in the audience, and so we communicate through the story um, day by day and how um, you know we collaborate and create a story together is completely different and so that's the exciting thing and before I go on stage I, I go on stage thinking so um, what kind of a conversation can I have with the audience today and uh, and then I try I, I start out with the introduction I'm just just talking about everyday thing and uh, while I am I'm talking to the audience I decide, okay, so the first story is going to be this and go in. So um, that's that's the exciting part. You don't choose before, you, as you're going along, you decide. No, because... Uh, no. It depends you, on yeah, the exchange. Yeah, yeah, you can't, you can't yeah. tell with what kind of an audience there yeah. is. You, maybe you would have an option of five stories in your mind, mm -hmm. and, then, and then you go out and choose. Wow, because that's something I felt very strongly. I was talking with my friends about this. Was yeah your spirit mm -hmm. comes out and connects with the people and the people connect with you. But mm -hmm. um, when I see, I, I haven't seen much mm -hmm. Western, uh, how do you say, stand-up comics yeah, in yeah. real life, but it seems that it's more just a presentation. Mm -hmm. And what you're doing seems to come from, you're very still, and then you project your spirit and it catch on something, and then it, it's this dialogue, as you say. Mm -hmm. So it's a very... Um, a two-way experience mm. quite amazing yes. yes so that's that's very important to create mm. because um, the the stories the subjects are um, w um, when I tell a classical story um, they're old you know they're mm. they're maybe like two thousand two hundred years ago stories of um, that has been passed since then so I would have to create a bridge for the audience who are living in the modern world to to come and you know, join this world together, and so making that bridge in the beginning is very important. Yeah, yeah. And um, the stories often uh, poke fun at people's foolishness. Yeah, yeah. So, w were they the the origin of it? Was it like a a be careful type uh, thing put into folk yes, storytelling? Yes, yes. There okay. is. Um, there are some uh, uh, theories of where Rakugo came from, but one is um, that it came from Buddhist um, preachers, mm. Buddhist monks' um, speak, uh, speeches. And so um, they, they would talk to the ordinary people, and, and they would have some kind of a lesson inside. But then if it's... Um, too hard it's you know uh, people would not listen people would get bored so they would have some kind of a story to to show their um you know what what they want to teach and those were funny stories and, and those became separated and became rakugo and and the difficult part um stayed with the buddhist monks and the difficult parts were cut apart and you have the uh, the soft mm. uh, foolish parts very interesting <laughs> Yeah. Were there any um, old-time Rakugo performers, like your teachers, teachers' generation, or yeah. um, who were famous for particular things or particular stories? Mm. Are there different styles of Rakugo, or is it just one? One very, very famous Rakugo performer is... Um, um, did, he, he performed around 1860s, um, 70s, <clears throat> 80s. And his name is Sanyute Encho. And this Encho created a lot of stories that became classical stories, classics. 
And the way he created those stories um, was, I guess, a very, not, not very new, but uh, it's, uh, it's very interesting because he would have three subjects or three words. He would take three words from the audience and then on the spot, he would create a, a story um, combining these uh, three words and, and do it in front of um, people. So he was a genius. Yeah. But uh, the three words, for example, there was a, like a leather wallet, a drunkard, uh, and a dream or something. Mm-hmm. And, and then that would, he, he created one of the masterpieces of Bakugo, which is called Shibahama. And so Encho was mm. the man. So a drunkard, a leather wallet, and a dream. I is is that story it. combining those? It's a, mm. it's a very touching story mm. um, between a husband and wife and about a lie, a white lie. It's a very, very, very touching story. Mm. How many stories did you have to learn? Um, to become a master class, which is called Shinichi in Japanese, um, I had to have a repertoire of a hundred um, classical stories and some um, original stories of my own. Mm. So I create some original stories. I have I've created maybe 40 um, of my stories. Mm. Are they all set in modern times? Or uh, mostly, but yeah. some I created um, original classic set setting stories. Mm. Were that did your teacher give you specific guidance on how this thing about projecting your voice and your spirit and the actual techniques? Did you get specific guidance, or you literally just watched? Literally, just watched. No guidance yeah, in specific. Was, Technique. Yes, because I I feel that it is very difficult to um, teach with words mm-hmm. um, the core the core technique, and you can only get it by watching the person, the master, and seeing and, and like analyzing in, in within yourself how he uh, counteracts with the audience and how he's able to make that world. Um, mm. And uh, may- maybe it would be easy. He could simplify some things and teach me, but that would not be enough. And, and many parts would be lost in that process of simplification. It's exactly like martial arts. Yeah, yeah. Study with the teacher, yeah. Mm. That's great. Mm-hmm. This, this is a practical question, but Japanese sit in seiza a lot. Did, did you, was you raised sitting a lot in seiza? And was that a difficult thing that you, obviously in performance, you sit a long time. Yeah, yeah. Was yeah. that something you had to relearn or it was easy? Well, um, well I, I, I did it uh, daily, I guess, when I was a kid. Okay. And so it was nothing, that, uh, nothing special, but mm. to sit on stage for an hour in that position is quite torturous, yeah. even even now. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And you're very still. It's like um, yes. almost zazen, and then you come to life. And uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, it's, we're told not to move that much. Um, mm. So keep our movements minimal. Yeah, and you have this fan, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That becomes everything. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Was that from the beginning of Rakugo? They just, okay, we're just going to have the us and the fan and... Mm-hmm. Yes, I, yeah. I guess so. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I, I happen to have it here. Um, and I have a very, very, yeah, it's an interesting thing because we, we're, we usually have a fan and tenugui is yes. a hand towel. So these are the only two props that we're allowed to carry. Mm-hmm. And, and using these things, like, you know, smoking or you know chopsticks or like um rowing a boat wow. like this so many actions using you know, you go for the sword so many many actions using these just this these tools and i guess um 
not having limiting um, the tools, the props to two is mm. just uh, for the purpose of maximizing the imagination of the yeah. audience. Yeah. yeah. What I found interesting was that uh, I got a I got a present from my um, English. Um, I I did a show at Cambridge um, and with the uh, the students, uh, gave me this the tea tea towel. And it's the same, you know, <laughs> same, same with um, Shinagui. So maybe, yeah, I, I can use this on my stage. We were talking about traditional culture. Yeah. This is probably something that you could say when people go on holiday in England, yeah. Yeah. they get a tea towel from that place with it, you know, that with the little yeah. drawings of the okay. seaside of town uh -huh. or something. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, this is a Cambridge one. So I, I can guess see King's okay. College. King's oh, College wow. is on okay. there. Yeah. Cambridge. Yeah. So maybe uh, you'll use this one day in your show. Mm -hmm. I probably will. <laughs> <laughs> and um, completely different subject. Yeah. Is there any Western comedy that you like, or do you just tend to focus on Japanese? Oh yeah, I, I like. Um, for example, I like uh, Trevor Noah, um, okay. stand-up comedian. Yep. And uh, what I feel was interesting is that the, he uses a lot of a similar technique in his mm. routines, and uh, he does. Uh, uh, a routine where he leads the narration out and then he acts out the characters that appear in, in re they're, they're mostly real life but uh, he um, does react the uh, the situations that he had or conversations he had without saying and then I said that and then he said that he would leave that out right. just like just like black Google <clears throat> like that and and it's very powerful uh, in those moments, he gets the most laughs. Mm. So uh, I guess this this technique is um, something very useful mm. in, in comedy. Mm. I guess. What about old time Western comics that you may have seen on TV or anybody mm -hmm. stands out for you? Uh, here, well, mm. maybe not here, but uh, Dave Allen. Mm -hmm. um, Yes, was uh, a person I, I saw because he would sit sit on stage, right? Yeah. Just and sit on a chair and yes. talk. Yes, and then he would have some moments like Rakugo as well. He would sit, be sitting there and then acting uh, the conversations. Yes, so so him mm -hmm. I uh, mm -hmm. felt a similarity as well. I, I sort of look for mm -hmm. the same kind of technique, I guess. When yeah, I, when yeah. I see stand up comic. Hmm, and what about the? condition of Rakugo in Japan now? Is it uh, flourishing? Is it dying out? How is it? It's not really flourishing, but it's not dying as mm. well. And uh, it's faring well among the, uh, uh, the traditional entertainment. And I think one of the reasons is because in Rakugo, in, for example, in Kabuki or in um, maybe Kyogen or Bunraku there, you have to come from a certain family to rise up to the mm -hmm. top. You know, that's, that's very important to begin very early uh, in childhood. But in Rakugo, um, that's not the case. You can, you can be an outsider and mm -hmm. uh, if you have talent or if you, you know, put effort and, and the audience likes you, then you can um, rise to the top. And so it's a bit different from other um, traditional mm. entertainment in that sense and also I guess we're changing little by little to fit the modern audience so the, the classical stories have survived 200 or 300 years but the, the reason is because they have been changing mm. um, through the process and so if we look back we say Rakugo is traditional but uh, during those times, they were just live shows, you know, present day live shows all the way. So we have that kind of uh, feeling and we don't want to stick to some kind of firm, you know, mm. idea of traditional. I see. Do you personally like watching Kabuki or any other traditional? I, I occasionally go. Mm. I'm not like a, a real big fan. Yeah. So if you ask me about Kabuki, I would have. Yeah, yeah. Very, very shallow answers. <laughs> <laughs> and in your in your own life, what else do you enjoy to 
observe because I notice you when you're walking around you're very very observant obviously you're thinking of uh, you know material like mm -hmm. you're talking about last time in Cambridge yes with the punting and falling in the river yeah so what do you in terms of arts and traditions what do you personally like to to see and hear I just listen to people's conversation uh -huh. you know while work walking around mm. uh, yeah, that's that's the the biggest part in uh, the inspiration because they talk about things that I never imagined, and, mm. and that's always very interesting. Yeah, yeah. And of course, when I go to other kinds of theaters or you know other kinds of entertainment, live entertainment, I I really get stimulated, you know, um, and energy, and mm. you know it, it starts um, my my brain starts you know moving like oh oh I could use this or you know, I could do that and this. Yeah. Okay, before my last couple of questions. Yeah. Angelique, you had your question. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Uh, no, no, because it was ridiculous. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. That's probably yeah. a good uh, one. It's okay. I wanted to know if you were, if you really dyed your hair or if it was just a wig. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, Which do you think? Uh, you really dyed it. Yes, you're right. <laughs> From the, the, the audience in, at the stage, you could not tell, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah really dyed it. Mm. Mm. It's quite effective as a presentation as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. And that was the other thing we were talking about when you take off your first kimono, yeah, yeah. your kimono, and yeah. you can, at that moment you become the character. Right, right. That's very effective. So that's like um, a formal um, coat. It's mm. called haori. So when you wear it in a informal occasions. So when I come out on stage, I'm Shino Haru and I'm facing the audience. So I'm, I'm uh, dressed in a formal attire, and then I take it off, and that's the start of the story. So I become different people, um, conversing with each other. So uh, there's a line of uh, the sense I put it like this in front of my zabuton, and it's it's a sign of um, I will be doing my show or here from mm. here and and uh, to to you. Mm. But then, of course, we don't want that line to divide the the, um, the air atmosphere. So uh, it, it sort of exists and it does not exist. But uh, mm. you know, that's a sign of me becoming not me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Two more questions. Yeah. Um, so the second to last one is: Yeah. Could you, for us, mm -hmm. the flying monk viewers and all of us here? Could you do a very short uh, Ragulko story just to show the, the essence? We have 10 or 12 minutes left, so uh, even a few minutes, a short one or... Okay. Um, okay, so uh, this is a very um, two, three minutes long. Um, it's a story about a boy um, with a very long name. Okay, his parents, Mr. and Mrs. Sugita, gave birth to a boy. And since he was their first child, they wanted to give him a good name. So they went around um, collecting good names. And when they had collected all the names, they could not choose one. So they decided to put all the names together. And the first, first name was called Jugemu, which means everlasting happiness. And so, therefore, the boy's name became Jugemu, Jugemu, Boko no Surikire, Kaijari Suigo no Suigo, Matsu Unai, Matsu Furai, Matsu Kuner, Tokoro, Nisumu Tokoro, Yabura Koji no Bura Koji, Paipo, Paipo, Paipo no Shuringa, Shuringa no Gurindai, Gurindai no Pompokopi no Pompokona no Chokyume no Chosuke. So that was his name. And since the name was very good, he grew up to be a healthy schoolboy. And every morning, his friend Kinta would come to pick him up saying, Good morning! Let's go to school! Oh, Kinta, thank you very much for coming. 
Well, you see, our Jugemu Jugemu Goko no Suri Kire Kaisari Sugio no Sugio Matsu Rai Matsu Furai Matsu Tunel Tokoro ni Sumu Tokoro Yabra Kozi no Bura Kozi Paipo 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 no Shuringan Shuringan no Gurindai Gurindai no Pompo Pi no Pompo Kara no Chokume no Choske He's still sleeping <laughs> Let me wake him up, okay? Hey, Jugemu Jugemu Goko no Suri Kire Kaisari Sugio no Sugio Matsu Rai Matsu Furai Matsu Tunel Tokoro ni Sumu Tokoro Yabura Kozi no Bura Kozi Paipo 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 no Shuringa Shuringa no Gurindai Gurindai no Pompokopi no Pompoka no Chokyume no Chosuke Why don't you wake up? Kinta's coming to pick you up Hey, Jugemu Jugemu Goko no Suri Kire Hey, Mrs. Sugita I have to go to school because school will be over So every morning was a trouble like that And sometimes the boys would get in a fight and Kinta would be hit on his head and he would have a bump on his head and he would come crying to Mrs. Sugita's place saying, Mrs. Sugita, Jugemu, Jugemu, Goko, no Suri Kire, Kaisari Sugyo, no Suri Yo, Matsu, Hurai, Matsu, Hurai, Matsu, Kunel, Tokoro, Nisumu, Tokoro, Yabura, Koji, Nobuna, Koji, Paipo, 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 no Shuringa, Shuringa, no Gurindai, Gurindai, no Popogo, Pino, Popogo, Nano, Chokyume, no Chosuke, hit me in the head and made a bump. Oh, what a bad boy. So you saying that a jugemu jugemu goko no suri kire kaisari sugyo no sugyo matsu rai matsu furai matsu kuneru tokoro ni sumu tokoro yabura koji no bura koji paipo 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 no shuringa shuringa no gurindai gurindai no pompo kopi no pompo kora no chokyume no chosuke hit you in the head and made a bump. What a bad boy. Honey, did you hear that? Oh, a jugemu jugemu goko no suri kire kaisari sugyo no sugyo matsu rai matsu furai matsu kuneru tokoro ni sumu tokoro yabura koji no bura koji paipo 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 no Shiringa, shiringa, no guri da guri da no popo 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 ra no chokyu me no chosuke hit kinta in his head and made a bump. What? So you say in that a jige me jige me koko no sukure kaiju shige no sukure matsu na matsu hura matsu kuneru to kono sukuto koro yabra koji no bura koji pai po pai po pai po no shiringa shiringa no guri da guri da no popo 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 ra no chokyu me no chosuke hit kinta in his head and made a bump. What a bad boy. Hey kinta, come here, come here, show me your head, huh? Show me your head. Where's the bump, huh? Where's the bump? There's no bump. Uh, the name was so long that the bump already disappeared. <laughs> oh, I was hoping my battery wouldn't run out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's wonderful. Yeah. So that's uh, a story called Jigemu. So, Master Shino Haru, uh, last question. Yeah. What is your mission and your goal and your, your hope for your your art, mm. your craft. Yes, um, so uh, performing in English um, is one thing, like I said, um, something that uh, made me realize uh, where I am uh, in, in the process of training. And so uh, I would like to continue doing this. And because I feel that there's something universal inside Rakugo that people can connect to, worldwide it's about foolish things we do and uh but you, you can't deny that i mean people um do foolish things and when you think about it and when you approach it in the rakugo style and say but, but that makes people charming that makes it attractive you know um then a world would be a better place a nicer place to live so i want to spread it and um, perform it all over the world I guess. That's wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.